Today, I'm a math professor, and I teach calculus for a living. But when I was a student, I really struggled, and in fact, I barely even passed first-year calculus. So in this video, I want to share my story, how I struggled and then improved as a learner, and how my perspective has changed going from being a student to a professor. I took calculus for the same reason that many people take calculus. It was a requirement. Rightly or wrongly, it's required for an enormous number of STEM programs. And in my case, I was a little bit torn between whether I wanted to do physics or computer science. And calculus, again, rightly or wrongly, is a very challenging course where students out of high school come in rating themselves in general very positively. For example, they say they're confident about math and they enjoy math, that they understand math and that they're ready for calculus. But ultimately, only about half of students are going to get an A or a B in American research universities or four-year colleges. It can really be a bucket of ice water in the face, and that was definitely the case for me. So this is my story. Firstly, we all come into calculus with our own attitudes towards mathematics, and mine wasn't great. There has been a lot of research building on Carol Dweck's notion of a growth mindset. And the idea is that if you believe that you can improve in mathematics, you're more likely to engage in effective learning behaviors that mean you actually improve at mathematics. For example, if you believe that you're quote-unquote bad at mathematics, something I generally don't think is true for people, then you might take learning behaviors like just trying to memorize a ton of formulas for the test or copying solutions you find on the internet. Behaviors that might get you through the course but aren't intended for you to deeply understand what's going on. But this kind of fixed mindset also works in reverse if you believe that you are good at mathematics. And in fact, people had been telling me for years that I was good at mathematics. I think just because I'd once done well in one competition in like grade six or something. And so I had really internalized this idea that I was the type of person who was quote unquote good at math. This was a fixed thing. I didn't have to work at math. I was just supposed to be good at it. And so I wasn't engaging in behaviors that would allow me to actually improve at mathematics. Sometimes even the opposite. I had this sort of delusional belief that to demonstrate how good at mathematics it was, I should do as little work as possible and prepare as little as possible because only then would I be able to demonstrate my self-perceived brilliance at mathematics. Now, that might have worked to some extent in high school, but it really just hit a brick wall when I got to university because the simple reality was that the learning strategies I was doing were not going to cut it. I couldn't sort of just show up to class and half pay attention and do nothing else and succeed. It wasn't going to happen. But then even worse, I started to develop an anxiety about mathematics where I didn't want to work because if I did work hard at mathematics and then perform poorly, that was going to be the ultimate proof that the self-perception I had just wasn't true anymore. And so it was just sort of psychologically easier to just not try at all. Now, behaviorally, I wasn't exactly a bad student. Like, I pretty much always went to class, and if the teacher put something on the board, I was going to write it down on my notes. If there was a test, I was going to study for it the night before. I wasn't a terrible student. Notice that everything I did was extremely passive. The instructor would write things on the board and I would write them down on my notebook. I didn't have to understand them. I didn't have to pay attention. And I certainly wasn't reviewing them, asking questions and diving deeper into them after class. I sometimes joke that with uninspired professors who just take the textbook and copy it down to their notes and then copy that onto the chalkboard where students copy it into their notebook that nobody in the room needs to be paying attention at all for that to happen. So my learning behaviors were all passive, and partly this is a function of the instructors in the courses and how they wanted us to engage the material, and partly it was just what I understood about learning at that time. I just thought learning was a passive engagement. Finally, I just wasn't in love with mathematics. I did like the idea of liking mathematics, but that's not the same thing as liking it itself. Now, I don't begrudge anybody who doesn't immediately fall in love with calculus. Well, a great teacher can definitely support that to a degree. It's not always the fault of bad teachers either. Calculus as a subject and the way it's commonly taught just isn't always the course that really inspires a love for mathematics. And that definitely wasn't the case for me then, even though I really do love calculus today. Okay, so looking back now as a professor many years later, what do I think about all of this? 
My first real point, I think the most important point in this video, is that if you find that you're struggling yourself, that does not mean that calculus and mathematics is not for you. Of all of the thousands of students that I've worked with over the years, I've never met somebody who's not able to improve at mathematics, to get to a place where they can use mathematics in their programs, in their lives, where they can even go on and enjoy mathematics. I just don't have that experience as a professor where people are in these fixed camps of good at math or bad at math and there's just nothing you can do about it. Now, it certainly is true that some students have an easier time or a harder time at calculus. And the sense I have is that your prior decade of learning experience and mathematical exposure and the habits of doing mathematics that you have built up all can contribute to make calculus easy or hard. And for the most parts when I work with students, except in cases when perhaps their pre-calculus algebra skills are so undeveloped that I recommend them take a pre-calculus course first. Other than that, I think you can go on and improve and develop as a mathematician specifically in calculus. It might not be right now, this semester, halfway through, while you're struggling, while there's a ton of other life factors going on, but you can get there. My big advice is just to not let those fixed mindsets about mathematics typeset you into a specific pattern of behaviors that's really challenging to escape from. One thing I've seen very clearly in my analytics over the years is that students who perform poorly in Calculus 1 often go on to perform poorly in Calculus 2 as well, and sometimes even do worse. In contrast, students who withdraw out of Calculus 1 or fail Calculus 1 but then try it again have actually a very decent success ratio. Sometimes I just really think when you're rushing from high school into Calculus, you need a little bit of time to breathe, to get your head out of the water, to be able to focus on the learning behaviors and immediately trying to rush through the entire Calculus sequence can be a little bit too much based on your current experiences. So it is okay to do poorly in first year calculus. I see it all the time, and that does not mean that you're not gonna continue on and succeed. My second big point is to be an active learner of mathematics and not a passive learner of mathematics. I'll uh, put up some links to some of my previous videos on how to effectively learn mathematics, but that is the real lesson. When you're in class, try to be actively engaged with what the instructor is saying. Think about questions that you could ask even if you choose not to ask them. Reflect on the questions they ask you. After class, dive in and try to figure out exactly why everything is going on. And the biggest thing of all is to actually get your hands dirty practicing problems, doing those as authentically yourself as you can and not taking the shortcuts because the goal of problems is for you to be able to understand it and you actively engaging in it is the most effective way for that to happen. I didn't really figure out that I should be an active participant in my own learning until the second half of my second year in university and it made just such a world of difference. Not just my grades but also to that emotional relationship with mathematics that I was talking about because now I was seeing that my ability in mathematics was related to the work and the effort that I was putting in to be actively engaged in mathematics. This was just so liberating and really effective for reinforcing those types of learning behaviors. And then finally, unexpectedly, I just fell into love with mathematics. It actually happened in an abstract algebra course, not calculus. This was a course I was taking for my physics and or computer science degrees. I still hadn't figured out which it was gonna be. But in abstract algebra, you learn all sorts of definition, theorem, proof style mathematics where you're just logically and rigorously developing these proofs to convincingly show that things are true. And I really fell in love with that style of mathematics. Calculus so often, and, and often quite unfortunately, is taught as this very computational thing where procedural fluency with those computations is highly valued. And, and that's not true for all instructors. I try not to teach exactly that way myself. But calculus nevertheless is not as much of a definition, theorem, proof, style of mathematics that I really fell in love with. And it was falling in love with other parts of mathematics that then when I came back to calculus and I really started to look into the big conceptual ideas and the geometry of everything, that now I find calculus so beautiful, which I indeed really think that it is. So everyone's journey to loving mathematics or maybe not loving mathematics, that's fine too, is a little bit different. And it's okay if it doesn't strike you in first year calculus, that doesn't mean that you're not gonna love mathematics in general. 
so that was my story. And maybe parts of it resonated with you and maybe parts of your experience was very different from my experience. And that's okay as well. I do want to note that I had a large number of privileges when I was first learning calculus that many students of mine don't have. Just one example is that a large number of students are working part-time jobs well there at university where I had the luxury to stay at home and I didn't start working until my third year. And so that can just cause a huge amount of time pressures and, and maybe you'd love to jump away at all these ideas I've given in videos like this and start just crushing calculus, but you can't because you've got all these other things going on in your life. And again, that just shows how struggling in calculus doesn't define you. It doesn't mean that you're going to never be able to succeed in mathematics. And in my case, it was just a blip on an otherwise long and, and really sort of loving relationship with mathematics, a, a journey that I've been on now for, well, a good portion of my life. There is one thing that is quite different today than when I was taking calculus, which is that there is an enormous amount of resources on the internet to support you in your learning. Hopefully my channel is included, but I also want to share with you the sponsor of today's video, which is Brilliant. Brilliant is a fantastic online learning platform so that you can learn STEM topics at your own pace. And what I really like about it is that it is delightfully interactive. When learning calculus, for instance, we can gain visual intuition about the relationship between the function and the area under the curve, or be able to see how increasing the number of rectangles in our approximation does a better and better job of computing out that area. Brilliant does more than just explain all the big ideas. It gives you opportunities to practice what you've learned, to get feedback, and to have all the supports there if you need a little bit more explanation. This is exactly that kind of active learning that I was talking about early in this video, and it's why I'm so proud to be sponsored by Brilliant. So to get started for free, go to brilliant.org slash Trevor Bazzett. And in addition, the first 200 people to click the link are gonna get 20% off an annual premium subscription. With that said, if you have any questions or comments or wanna share your own experience with the calculus, leave them down in the comments below and we'll do some more math in the next video.